In this video, I want to talk about uh, how normal distribution can be used in real life. So I want to play a video of filling of uh, uh, Coke bottles. It's a short video. I want to watch this. So this is how uh, bottles are filled. So I'll play this fast so you can see the bottles are being filled. It's been cleaned. And this is a production line. Now, as these bottles are being filled, <coughs> uh, there's quality test, quality, quality control happening to see whether the bottles are being filled. And these machines are automated machines where, if suppose this is 500 mils, uh, even though it is automatic, you don't, you cannot say it's exactly 500 mils. So there are some bottles which is over 500, some bottles which are under 500. So this is a production line. So let me play forward. So this is being labeled. Okay. And now you can see this is packed. And now, so I want to do a match based on this. So these are being packed now, and now it's in the end of the production line. Okay, so let's now look at the question here. If I had a random sample of 500 mil of milliliters of Coke bottles was tested to measure the amount of Coke in the bottle and was found that 2.5% per, of the bottles had Coke less than 480 mil and 5% of the bottles had Coke over 510 mils. If the amount of Coke in the bottle is normally distributed, and the filling process is, is done by an automatic machine, is done, I missed the word, done by automatic machine, find the mean and standard deviation of the machine. So, now, that's an, on a production line, they always test whether the amount that they state on the bottle is uh, statistically correct to acceptable level. So let me, so let this is, we, can assume that the bottles are normally distributed. So there is a mean here, which we want to find. Mu is in the middle, and there's a standard deviation of the machine we want to find. So what are we saying? 2.5% of the bottles measure, sorry, have a Coke less than 480 mil. So 2.5, so 4, so this is say, let me call this X1, is 480 mils. And there's 2.5 percent bottles, which measures less than 480 mil. So this is whenever it's less than, it is to the left. So this, so in terms of probability, you can say the probability that a bottle is less than 480 mil is 0 .0, 0 0.025. This is 0 0.025. And if this is so it will not be, so this will be 50% or this will be 0.5 minus 2.5. And 5% 5 of the bottles uh, have Coke over 510 mils. So 5% it's over, that means to the right. So to the right of, five, this is 510 mils. And this area is 5% or in terms of probability, the probability that a bottle will have over 510 mils is 0 0.05. So these, this is your X1 and this is your X2. This is your X2. Now, each X1 and X2 has got a Z value. Now what is Z? Z, has, Z you can find by using this formula, which is X, which is a random variable, 
minus mu, which is your mean, divided by standard deviation. Now, just to explain briefly, this is a measure which tells you how many standard deviation is your random variable away from the mean. That's what it means. So, first, first thing that we need to do is to find the z value. So, let me call this z2, z2, and this is z1. So, the z corresponding to the mu, so let me, so let me write z, yeah? The, cor uh, the corresponding value for mu, the z value is 0, sorry, the z value for mu is 0, and standard deviation is 1. Okay, now, standard deviation is 1, and when you want to find z1 and z2, using inverse normal table, you have to enter the mu as, so let me write, instead of writing z, if you want to find the z value, using the inverse normal table, you have to enter your mu is 0, and standard deviation is 1. Okay, so I'll, I hope you understand, because mu or your mean is how many standard deviation away from mean? Well, it is zero away from mean itself. So, let's find z1 and z2 using the uh, graphic calculator. So, first we need to go to, uh, say, stats, distribution, normal, and inverse normal. So, now the to use inverse normal, you need three things, the area, your standard deviation and mu. Now to the left, if you're putting the left area, you're talking about this area, you have to enter it enter 0 0.025. Standard deviation and mu by default, if you haven't uh, standard deviation, so you go enter, this is the standard deviation is 1 and mu is 0. And if you go enter, this is x, but this is, in fact, z. So this is minus, if you round it to 2 dp, is minus 1.96. So let me explain this briefly. This is minus 1.96. Now what does this mean? This means, if mu is 0, this 480 is 1.96 standard deviation away from mean. That's what it means. And for this, you have to enter the area of 0 0.05 to the right. Okay, now for those who have the old calculator, they may, by default, they will ask you to enter the left area. So this calculator allows you to enter the left and right and central. So for this, I'll have to enter the right area. So click first F2, and the right area is 0 0.05. Okay, and then if you go, it's 1.64. So what does this mean? This means if mu is 0, if mu is 0, this value, which is 480, is 1.96 standard deviation away from mean, and this is 1.64 standard deviation away from mean. So now we can use this formula to find uh, mu and standard deviation. So let me scroll this slightly up. So now we can say z1 is equal to x1 minus mu over sigma and xz2 should be x2 minus mu over sigma. So we have to do a bit of algebra here. Yeah? So z1 is minus 1.96 this is minus 1.96, so my pen gets plain. Minus 1.96 is equal to your x1. What is the x1? x1 is 480 minus mu over standard deviation, which is sigma. So cross multiplying, I can say minus 1.96 sigma is equal to 480 minus mu. Okay, and adding mu to both sides, I can say mu plus 1.96 sigma 
is equal to 480. So, this is your first equation. This is your first equation. And using this, we know z is 1.64 is equal to your x2. What is the x2? Which is 510 mils minus mu over sigma. Again, doing the same process, cross multiplying or multiplying sigma to both sides. 1.64 sigma is 510 minus mu. Now, adding mu to both sides, I can say mu plus 1.64 plus 1.64 is equal to 510. Now, we're going to use, you can use simultaneous, this is a simultaneous equation, sigma, sorry. So, if you have learned a bit of algebra, you know how to solve simultaneous equation. You can do it without a calculator, but I'm again going to use a calculator. I'm going to go to equations, go to simultaneous, and this is two unknowns. So, so just to show you, so you have to enter your sigma, your A is 1, so you enter 1, then 1.96, 1. Point, this is minus 1.96. I made a mistake here. This should be minus 1.96. So let me drag this so that you can see the whole equation. So this is this is equation one and this is equation two. So this is one. That's why I'm putting here. This is one mu, and this is also one mu. So enter one. And this is 1.64, 1 1.64, enter, and under C you enter 510. And again you have to enter 1 minus 1 1.96 and 480. Okay, so this is 1, 1 1.64, 510, 1 minus 1 1.96, 480, and then go solve. So the first value is your mu, which is 496.3 mils, and the standard deviation is 8.3 recurring. So you can see the mu, your mu is 496.3 recurring mils. And the standard deviation of the machine was 8.3. So now you can make up your own question based on this. Well, and that's how you learn. Suppose if you want to make this machine so that, so this is the mu 496, 496.3, and this is how much? This is 8.3 mils. Standard deviation is 8.3. Say, now the question can be, if this is made to be 500 and standard deviation is, say, 5 mils, how much uh, how much percent of the bottles would weigh less than 500 mils? Okay, that's something that you can uh, calculate. So, if suppose this you change to 500 mils and this to 5, you want to answer the question, how many of the bottles out of 1,000 bottles would be less than 500 mils.